Hello, Marcus. How are you doing? Yeah, I'm good. Yeah, it's been a while. Some things have happened. Yeah, it's just a few. So yeah. I think our last episode, <laughs> which was supposed to be a weekly thing, I think was back in March? No, it was in February because I was just about to move, remember? Of course it was. Yeah, so yeah. just to summarise <laughs> what happened um, back in February when we were supposed to have a weekly thing, uh, you basically moved house... And then didn't have internet for how many weeks? Uh, About four or five. (laughs) You were stuck in the middle of rural Wales with no internet for five, six weeks. And yeah, uh, yeah. it wasn't ideal, was it? It wasn't ideal, no. And like, you know, it's the modern age. You can use 4G and whatnot. But to be honest, the 4G isn't great in rural Wales. So there wasn't really any (laughs) point. Um, So yeah, that's kind of what happened. And uh, then I got Wi-Fi. And then um, I moved back and everything was fine. But then we just just forgot about it, I guess. Yeah, we just kind of got on with getting the musical on. I think we, there were loads of opportunities that we took hold of and then they just kind of consumed our time, really, with yeah. what we were doing with the musical. Let's try and summarise or, or at least maybe go through one by one. Can you remember what's happened since February? Because it's been a while. Right. So, so since February, just done the first read through. So for me personally, we have now, I, I guess, completed a second draft. Like there's little bits here and there to chop and change, but pretty much there. We learned what was wrong with the script from the first read through and we made those changes and you've kind of updated the script throughout the year. We're now onto yes. a pretty solid stage where we're like, we like this script. Mm-hmm. Um, and then I'm, I'm trying to think because I remember the the title we used for the last one it was Our Public Awaits, and I was like, was that a bit premature to, to do Our Probably Public Awaits? Little, yeah, <laughs> considering now that we've we've done a fair bit of research into other musicals and we've realised just how long the route is going to be. Mm-hmm. Um, I think we were a little bit ambitious at the beginning of the year, thinking, oh yeah, we're gonna we're gonna get this done, we're gonna get that done. Yeah, all good. Well, and we'll be on our way up to Edinburgh by the end of the year. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, that's a, there's a little bit beyond our grasp at the moment. But I think it's fair to say that we've made some pretty significant progress. Would you agree? I would agree. Of course, pandemic and blah, blah, blah has halted it a little bit. But I, obviously, it, this year hasn't been an issue. But like, it's certainly not as bad as it was last year. But yeah, I, I'd say we have made significant progress and we've learned a lot as well. Yeah, we've been finding our way. And I think also there's there's been a number of opportunities that we've been able to take advantage of throughout the year. So I think the first one that came up was with Queen's Theatre. We approached them, I think, in April, which is probably yeah. one of the reasons why we didn't end up, you know, having those talks on stereo again um, mm-hmm. because of that. Oh, Viking musical. This sounds cool. I'm just halfway. Well, I'm not halfway, really. I've made one of my Viking shields out of pallet wood. <laughs> And I've got to paint it and put the leather on it and the boss on it. And um, and I've already got the cash. The guy's paid me 80, 80 quid for it already. But yeah, I like making Viking shields. I like Viking stuff. I love Viking stuff. Oh, Viking, Viking, Vikingy, Vikingy. <laughs> That's awesome, Bri. Um, So a little background about me and Nathan. We're, we're um, stage combat graduates. Uh, so, so we did a lot of fighting with shields and sword and shield and stuff in our training. And we were taught how to make some shields. And I'm sure you already have a great knowledge on it, but a little tip on advice. They used rawhide for the outer rim, which was really, really helpful. So if you get those um, rawhide bones for dogs, um, you can soak them for an evening. Um, they stink like anything, but they have a really good protective covering around the edge. So if you use a piece of rope, that goes around the wooden rim and then use the rawhide and staple it in place after it's been soaked and softened it'll make a really protective covering around the edge which means that you can fight for a lot longer than if it's just wood marcus wood (laughs) yeah Um, had to get it so to bring it back to the musical nathan Mm -hmm. we were talking very briefly about how one of the early opportunities that we had in the ear was to put some stuff on at queen's theater in hornchurch Do you want to talk a little bit about how that process was like and what we ended up doing there and that sort of thing? Yeah, so um, there was this opportunity for a scratch night. So they had six sets of performances and it was all around the Essex area and we just shown what people had so far. So there was us, there was another musical there, there was a comedian and there was a play going on there 
and there's a couple of story tells as well. We were all there to essentially show off what we had created so far. So for us, we had finished the demo album, um, not obviously fully mixing and releasing, but in terms of what we had written, we had completed it. And we wanted to get it out there. So this opportunity came up and it was great. So we applied for it and we got it, which was fantastic. And thank you to Queen's Theatre for giving us the opportunity. And then we um, hired some of uh, our wonderful actor friends and uh, such. We rehearsed for one night for about three hours. One night only. Um, and <laughs> it was our first experience of a scratch yeah. night though wasn't it we, we didn't even know what one was before we went along no. we I, like i i think i'd been to one before but like i I not um performed in one so i didn't we didn't know like what kind of scale it was and we we came up with like a full lighting rig and um costumes and everything and the guy came back just like uh um it's literally just you on a stage doing your thing there's nothing yeah calm calm Uh, down you're a bit over ambitious that should have been our warning signs for the whole of this year really (laughs) pretty much uh, yeah realizing Um, this this is a bit too big right now we need to find ways of scaling it down Uh, i'm just going to play through the uh the reply from bry yes the rawhide bones see i've got um i've got loads of leather and I actually do have some rawhide anyway, but I generally just use leather. The leather I've got now has been has been pressed. It's genuine leather, but it's been pressed and it's got like a snake skin effect. So it's going to be like Jormungandr, you know, this giant snake, and it will be like his skin around the shield. That's what I'm going with anyway. But yeah, the dog bone thing, I soaked some. And um, to be honest, I'm, I don't think I'll do it again because it reeks so bad. It stinks. It's gross. <laughs> <laughs> yeah it does wrong. it's you it, know it smells so bad especially if you're doing it in your house or like in your yeah. garden everyone gets annoyed like if you have a workshop it's not too bad but if you're using it in your house it's game over yeah, for like yeah. a week in your house <laughs> it's a trade-off though i guess isn't it you know durability versus um how much your house smells for a while yeah exactly i mean if you're living on on your own or with people who also have the same interests it's not as bad but if you're like i don't know with your parents or with other family members then it's it's not not necessarily the same the same switch mm-hmm. and i suppose there's also the difference of the fact that we would be using those shields daily to actually you know be pretty hard um, yeah whereas you're making something that's more of you know a, a centerpiece yeah leather's probably a better option because it looks nicer yeah, yeah. <laughs> um so then uh scratch night so then after we had rehearsed again rehearsed for a night and the actors picked it up so quickly they were amazing and it was the first time we'd heard our score sung live and Mm. it was the most surreal experience and it felt there were so many emotions the first time we heard the harmonies coming together we looked at each other so you were on piano i was on guitar we were playing and we heard it and it just it your, our faces just lit up um <laughs> so it was the it was it, the the feeling of something you've created coming together and sounding how you wanted it and it being performed live and you know feeling the emotion from the story and the song it was incredible i i, I can't describe it how, that first the, the hearing that for the first time i still get that a little bit with listening to the stuff as we're making the demo album it's incredible mm-hmm. to hear how everyone's come together under lockdown situations and uh, mm-hmm. and really bring bring the sound but i think what makes it what makes it life special especially for us is because it's been done separately. No, no one's been in the same room. It's all been mixed remotely. But hearing it live gives it an air of this is possible because mm-hmm. obviously we can do so much. Everyone does it individually and it comes together. But when you're doing it there live in the moment and they're doing it how you thought it would sound, it's possible. This can be done. And I think that is um, is where this sense of achievement came from. So what else has happened then since uh, since Queen's Theatre? Um... Uh, yeah, so so just a bit about the performance. We 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 did we went there, we did it, and we got a great reaction, and we connected with some of the other guys there who also did fantastic performances as well. After that, then we started releasing the demo album. I guess that was the next thing that we did. Uh, I think it was actually around about June time where we started thinking about Arts Council and we were going to try and get some Arts Council funding in initially. Yeah, um, I, I, I know that's what we did. We just had setback after setback. 
I know, I know that's what we did, but I'm trying not to think about that right now, Marcus. So <laughs> <laughs> no, but it's a, it's an interesting point though because yeah, like like I said, we've we kind of thought that certain things were going to happen faster than others. And I think that there's been a bit of a learning curve in actually how long things take to get produced and not just because of, you know, where they are creatively. Because mm. I think where we thought we're going to be ready to put stuff on by the end of the year is because mm. in the sense of the creative side of things, we pretty much were done and have been done. But there's mm. a whole other iceberg of stuff that is involved in actually putting a production on, which neither you or I have really done before. No. Which we're kind um, of getting to grips with because we've had to be put in those roles and, and no one else has taken them on just yet. Exactly. And we didn't know, like I say, because this has been a collaboration as well, um, including Vicky as well, we don't know how fast we were going to do things. We didn't know if we were going to be ready or when we were going to be ready. So I think the idea, I, I, I think what, what we, if we were, you know, ever going to do something like this again, which hopefully, hopefully we will, is we will start the Arts Council even when we're still completing the musical. So that by the, by the time that we finished it, we can just go, cool, we got the money, we can go and do it kind of thing. And, and put more things alongside rather than separating it from creating it, then trying to get it on, then trying to get the money and blah, 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 blah. We've learned a lot of things. I think one, one of the things is how upside down we've been doing things, but also how we've had to. Because we are mm. un we can't necessarily follow the same path as how things are supposed to be created because really mm. everything we've we've learned usually the funding is the thing that kind of gets secured first after maybe you know a tester song or something like that but mm. we simply don't have the body of work or the um the kind of notoriety to be able to do that from the off mm. so normally things would go down you know you you'd approach somewhere you get the funding they'd approve it then you'd get working on the creative side of things. You'd write the stuff. Part of your funding would be going towards marketing. Then you'd put on a production and it would all be, you know, well and good. And you'd have a producer from the get-go mm. because usually it's the producer who's responsible for all of those funding things and they go and find out a composer and a lyricist to come on board to their project rather than necessarily a composer or a lyricist going, we've got a thing, will somebody make it happen for us? Yeah, yeah. And, and, I, so think, and I think as well, us in particular have had this issue is because of how big we want it oh, yeah, um cool. and and it's and, always you know, going to be an issue of scale <laughs> yeah but but what but why that's an issue is because because of the size of the project other productions um, i'm not obviously trying to bash other other musicals or uh, new startup musicals but they they have a small cast or they have um, a relatively simple idea in terms of um how they can set it and how big it can be so that would be more easily fundable easier to put in a lot more spaces and easier to put your own money into i guess because there's a high the, the money would go further at a higher percentage but for us we've kind of in a way screwed ourselves by making it so big um, but, but then that, again that, it wouldn't be what it is if we had changed what scale it would be do you know what i mean this part no, of the absolutely. identity of the musical is caught up in its scale and i, I feel like the same could be said of the other great epic musicals, things like Les Mis. If you were to say, well, maybe it would have made sense to just tell Eponine's story rather than the story of the French Revolution, mm. then you'd be going, well, then that's not Les Mis. And I feel yeah, like there's a similar aspect that, we, yeah, we might have screwed ourselves over a little bit when it comes to the businessy side of things and, you know, just the scale of risk that's involved. But mm. creatively, I feel like we couldn't afford to do that because the story that we want to tell is so big. Exactly. Um, but, I th but the reason why, um, again, for, for us in particular, is be like you said, because we're unknowns. Like if, yeah, yeah. you know, if, what's it called, um, if Andrew Lloyd Webber, for example, wanted to do this story, it would make sense for him because it's bigger. Mm -hmm. um, he has more backing behind him, more notoriety, so it wouldn't be as big of an issue. But like you say, for us, because of relative unknowns, it makes things, um, I say a bit, but a lot harder. Yeah, but that's that's not to say that we haven't found other ways around it. So I think coming up against that hurdle of, of Arts Council funding and finding that we've got extra hurdles to jump over, like um, turning into a company to be able to receive funding and then also um, having to have certain you know funding budget plans matched in certain cases. Mm -hmm. We have had some positives on that side, such as the fact that every time that we share this with somebody, there's a really good reception and we've got theatres mm. and people who work in high up 
places in theatres who are going, we want to see this put on. We just need, you know, the evidence there that it is going to be worth our while. Mm. They're totally behind it. They just want to see it going, really. That's the thing. People as individuals, when they discover it, they go, oh, this is really interesting. But we need the masses to, you know, be interested in it. And that, and that's, yeah. again, where the issues lie. Um, so that is why, so I don't think we've actually explained this, and this is why we are releasing a new track from our demo album every week on our mm-hmm. social medias, is yeah. we're, we're trying to do it for multiple reasons. Obviously, one of those reasons being we've done it. It's not all mixed now, but like once it's obviously when the song is released, it is. So we want to release it out into the world and get to people knowing what our style is and what we're trying to go with the show. But then also we can send that to as many people as we like. It's easily accessible for people to find us if they want to find out more. Um, But also if it builds traction, then Arts Council funding and theatres are going to go, oh, cool, there's so and so many people that want to see this. This is worth our while. Let's go. Let's let's put some money into this and let's get it on the stage. There's a multiple... Uh, there's multiple reasons why we're doing it. So we, we we felt that that was a good marketing strategy. And by having it on so many different platforms as well, you could literally boil it down to, you know, we've got 22 tracks on Facebook, YouTube, Twitter, TikTok, and Instagram. So that's five social medias, 22 to- songs on five social medias. If mm-hmm. one of those goes viral, that's 110 chances for a song to go viral, then, yep. you know, that would do something. Then the followers would go up and blah, 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 blah. Which leads me on to kind of what we've spent the rest of our t- time doing, other than releasing these tracks on social media and that sort of stuff. We've also started to look for other avenues of how we get ourselves out there and how we get the the recognition. So do you want to talk a little bit about... Um, the podcast that we were on the other day and some of the other things that we've been doing to try and get ourselves in front of people. Yes. So uh, the other week, uh, was it last week or two weeks ago now? Yeah, nearly uh, two weeks ago. Two, two weeks um, ago, yeah. Yeah. Uh, we were on um, a podcast called Pretend World's Real People. They're wonderful people um, over at that podcast. So um, if you want to go check them out, you can. They're on wherever you get your other podcasts so we went on there we chatted about like say where we are right now how we started um us as individuals as well what our interests are and how we're planning to get the musical out there essentially what we're telling you now really um and so we because again we thought we'd approach different podcasts and other people who could potentially get our voices out there and try and again gain following to try and get more confidence in what we're doing um, so podcast is one way. Later on down the line, we're going to start contacting uh, local radio stations and musical theatre radio stations to see if they will play some stuff. That's another avenue. We've been contacting other musicals, so other startup musicals. We listen to their music, and if we like what we hear and we think that that um, they've got something going, we'll contact them. Sometimes it's about a possible cross promotion. Um, sometimes we just do have den- genuine questions. So we again in terms of funding we were like shall we form you know a, a named limited company um so we'll be asking them that how they started out and you know everyone's journey is different so we're trying to again gain more knowledge about how to put a musical on because you yeah. know we haven't done it before so yeah we've contacted other musicals as well and then also uh, some influencers as well um in terms of uh musical theater influencers and also people who have a general musical theater audience and people who do reviews of musical theater uh, new stuff as well and yeah just trying to widen our bracket whether that be here or overseas as well so if we if we gain some global following as well that would be pretty cool so um mm-hmm. yeah just be contacting as many people with similar interests to us and saying hey this is a thing what do you think but yeah, it's difficult because we're still, although this is two years in the making, we're still in early stages. Yeah, you know, we, we've got nothing apart from written songs and a script. That's all we have right now. You know, there's nothing more than that. So it's, yeah, we're, we're working through it. But yeah, that's kind of where we are. Mm-hmm. And I think that's the kind of where we should probably leave off then is is that our, our aim now is pretty much to just build as many audience members as we can every single person that's not a direct connection to us who likes or or follows the page or wants to have a listen to the music as we release it is a real bonus to us because it shows 
that there are people out there who really wants to see this put on. Mm-hmm. And um, I, I, like you say, it's it's wonderful hearing all the the feedback that we have had so far from friends and family, but also people who we don't know. And there have been a few contacted us and said, loving what you're doing. And that that is really nice to hear. And it gives us confidence that we're doing the right thing and to push us forward and gives us more motivation. Because sometimes when things aren't going your way, you know, you don't get, you know, you, you apply for something, you don't get it and you think, oh, is this really good or um, is are we doing it the wrong time? Uh, uh, do we need to do something else first? Or you know, you have so many questions about why. It, it's similar yeah, to being it's been an actor. A real act- roller coaster of emotions, yeah, isn't there? <laughs> it has, but it's similar to being an actor in a way. Like you know, personally as actors, we go right. I'm going to apply for this job. Okay, I don't get an audition. I apply for this job. You haven't gone get an audition. You apply for this job. Oh, you do get an audition. That's great. Um, but then you don't get the job. And mm-hmm. it's constant setback after setback. And I think it's very similar. So being an actor does help with the rejection. But like you say, it's more difficult because this is our first time doing something like this. So the conference um, starts lower because we have no experience in it. I, like as actors, we can fall back on previous performances that we have done. And we can go, no, I did well in that. I can do something good. It's just that at this moment... It's not right or that wasn't right for me. But with this, it's, you know, rejection going, oh, but I, oh, we haven't done this before. Um, okay, yeah, maybe yeah. it's not good. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Yeah, there's that constant sense of just re- re-evaluating the, the musical as a whole uh, because there's nothing that we've done before that we can judge it against. Mm. Um, so, yeah, if you're out there and listening, um, Give our, our page a like, you know, come and listen to the music, comment on it, you know, tell us what you think of it, uh, whether that's a, a good review, a bad review. It's helpful to get that that gauge of feedback, really, so that we have some more concrete evidence um, mm-hmm. as to knowing, you know, how well it's doing and what's what's going down well, what we might need to tweak before we actually get the main show on. All that sort mm. of stuff is really, really helpful. So yeah, the more and, interaction you can give, the better. Yeah, so um, it's Blovina Musical across all social medias, apart from Twitter, which we couldn't get for some reason. Um, that's just Blovina. So it's B-L-O-D-L-I-N-A musical. That You can spell musical. Yeah, so, but if you do listen to it, and um, you genuinely have some, you know, constructive criticisms. We want that as well. Um, a- any criticism is good criticism, unless it- it's just eh, you bad. Don't do it. Um, <laughs> but if you if you do gen- genuinely have something um, that you think we could do better of, please tell us because that that helps us as well. Um, so yeah, definitely. All right. Well, it's been lovely chatting to you, Nathan. Absolutely. And, uh onwards and upwards i think this might be the end of our stereo series just as a, a little bit of closure Do you think? for the thing oh we can continue if you want but the thing is i think we've kind of throughout our series of this we've covered every aspect of the musical we've talked about the story we've talked about the songs and how they came to be we've talked about publicity we've talked about the business side of things we've talked about mm-hmm. um the musicality and i, I think there's not really until we actually end up putting a show on and we've got more to talk about this there's not really much we can talk about, if that makes sense. Mm-hmm. Things are um, happening at a bit of a slower pace now. There's not sort of a weekly update that we can talk about. Yeah, we're week. not we're not writing songs, we're, uh, new songs. We're not, you know, getting new dialogue involved. Like it, it is just a waiting game now. So I, I do agree, you are right. Um, I don't think it's the end, but uh, it'll be the last one for a while. Unless, 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 unless you are listening to this right now and you do want to hear more from us. Um, you can contact us and say, hey, do more podcasts. They're really cool. I mean, you know, they are cool. Um, but yeah, you can uh, just let us know and then we can do some more and drop some questions as well. Sure. All right. Bye. Bye.